Yeah, I wanted to uh, show you this vise I was working on. Remember this piece I had welded? I just saw a cut on the end. But anyway, I, uh, I made that out of plastic before and then I redesigned it. It had that serrations on it. So I redesigned it into a, a dovetail because I had this uh, dovetail cutter I bought from Shars. And uh, it worked pretty good. It, uh, I was using cool mist on it, and the flutes were clogging up. I ended up using, had to use oil, cutting oil. But, uh, yeah, I'm uh, real happy about that. I put this little block on here just to put something on there. I never cut a dovetail before. Well, I mean, in the part. You know, I've cut dovetails before, but I cut them into the jaws. I cut them into the part. But this is that one that's adjustable. Got the, I use a 516 screw in there. But I'll take it apart, show it to you. Yeah, I thought I would make it out of aluminum just to have something to play with. I think uh, I think it'll work out okay. That's good enough to try. I don't have a, a lot of time to make it out of steel. But uh, it locks up pretty solid. I was really surprised. Let's see, it, as you open and close it, you can move it back and forth to adjust it to the center. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly centered because, uh, you know, your stock is usually oversized anyway. You just get it close. But I gotta loosen that. Actually, it'll come out now. I got, I got slots in there. I had it welded. This is that one I had welded. So what I did was, I undercut. This is a. It was a half inch diameter and I undercut it down because I knew when they welded it I didn't want to I didn't want a straight cut all the way down because when he welded it it has to fit into these slots now these slots are just for alignment you know they kind of hold it steady so I undercut it so that I knew I'd have to cut the weld, but that way I didn't have to cut too much of the weld. See here, I just cut a little piece of the weld, not a lot of it, because it's undercut. Same thing on this side. You put a little more weld on this one. But there's still a lot of weld inside this part. And the same thing on the end. Now what happened on the end 
was originally this was made for a quarter inch. So I made this piece 3 16 thinking the weld, you know, the weld would come out there and I'd just cut the weld. But then after he welded it, it uh, I started cutting on it and it was going to take too much of the too much of the weld away. And I didn't want to do that. This was this was this is all one piece and it's down into the surface fifty thousandths as a alignment so when he welded it he didn't have to sit there and hold it and clamp it and everything else and so it would line up. Of course I didn't have the hole in it. But anyway I started cutting this and I said well I'll be cutting too much of that weld away I don't want to do that so I uh, had to make a command decision and decided to bring this up to 512 so I opened this up from quarter inch to 512 and that way I didn't have to fill out any ECOs or get anybody approved I just did it myself but uh, this piece here this this came up and I knew I was gonna have to cut that away but I put a washer on there so I had to cut I had to put a little U, U cut where that washer was because I didn't want to cut this material all the way back. I wanted to leave that as thick as possible. So I got that washer on there. I got a little uh, little cut in there, clearance for that washer. Then the head of the bolt, just a little clearance for that. I figure, well, it's a lot better than trying to make it out of one piece. And uh, I put a couple dowel pins in here so that the part wouldn't move back and forth. Then the jaws come down and clamp on it. So when I made this part, I just put it on a 45 found the top of here and just started cutting down I moved over just a little bit come down just started cutting it and I did the same thing to the other side I didn't use the dovetail cutter for this I just used a regular end mill I just touched the top of the part and came down I don't remember what it was like 250 thousandths or something and so then I, I come back and I, I put a little flat on here because I didn't want it binding in the corner. So I put a little flat on there. And I took a little end mill, I think it was 3 16 and just put a little groove in there so it wouldn't hit on the back. Well, the back the back here is the top part here. I wanted to make sure that there was clearance here so that the only thing it was hitting on was the angle. 
And then I just took quarter inch end mill and just came to the top of this piece here and just drove it in there. I mean, it, you know, you, know, you could take that, you could drive it in there, you know, as far as you want. You could put a slot across the whole thing if you wanted to. And I thought about that at first, but then, you know, that's just a, a waste of time. You know, all you have to do is go in there, just clearance for that dowel pin. But it worked out, uh, it worked out good. As far as the, uh, the front of it, I had it overhanging. It over, it overhangs the front of the part so that he could put a weld on here. And I didn't have to clean that up. I didn't, I just took a cut on here to, to clean that up. So I ran the tap in there. It had a, a flat surface to go on, but there was no point in cleaning up that weld. In fact, you, you know, you want that weld there. You don't want to clean it up. But that was like I was talking about before. You could, if you had a piece that was wider, this, this piece here, I'll call that the base. You could take this angle piece and you could just move it back. Make another one and move it back. So that, see the thing is that this, this will only, this will only go so far. Uh, let me take this bolt out. It's, uh, but see, the way this is set up is that these, the, the back of these jaws that slide into here that keep it aligned, this, this is basically an alignment for that. And you can only go so far with it. A little dowel pin fell out here, but that's okay. Yeah, one of them's tight. The other one's just a little bit loose. But, yeah, you can only go so far with that. But you can, when you make another, if you make another set of jaws, you can just take this piece and move it back further. So you can accommodate a, a thicker piece on the bottom. Or you can move it, or you can move it in closer if you wanted to, but... I come up with this this dimension here which is a uh, about an inch and a half there but you know your piece of stock has to be longer than that so that's almost uh, one and five eighths Let me see what this is. Yeah, this is a uh, one and three eighths here. But you know, you got to have room for this thing to clamp in too. So that's why I just came up with that. That way, you can put it in there. Then you can clamp it, and then you can move it to center it. But, uh, yeah, it worked out really good. But anyway, that's what it looks like. One's a clearance hole, one's a tapped hole. And See, that, that keeps it lined up, the front of it lined up. Then you got the screws that are going to hold it down onto the plate. And then these holes on the bottom screw from the top of the the table into the into this unit so everything's held down tight so that's coming along pretty good i think that's about that's about finished as far as i'm concerned Oh, here's my little dowel pin.
Yeah, I really didn't want this one, to, the Loctite. I didn't want it to go in. I thought, well, if it, you know, I want to try it, make sure it works, then I could put a little Loctite on it. But this one was, when I pushed it in there to try it, I said, well, that's not coming out. So I'm going to have to put a little Loctite on this one. So I just wanted to show that to you.